Lawrence, thank you for joining us today at the Western Lakes Home and Garden Show. Been drawn like a moth to a flame by your Sauvignon Blanc and your own butty, you see. <laughs> you're a beacon of civilization. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit. You're obviously very well known for your flamboyant style and, and always have been. Now, we're of a, a similar age, I noticed, and there are some very dodgy photographs of me in outfits in the 70s. And I wondered Ooh, whether. Can I have that... a look? <laughs> <laughs> I wondered whether that sort of flamboyance from the 70s had influenced you in, in your style later on. I feel very strongly that actually you're missing a trick if you don't make it up as you go along. I think if you just do something because everybody else is doing it, you're not really living life to the full. Yeah. And I cannot claim uh, that there wasn't um, a, a couple of sort of, you know, a kind of a layering of the 70s to some of my choices. We live in a world where um, design, expression, fashion are often very, very understated. You know, mm. it's that sort of... British uh, reserve, that kind of British beigeness. Um, and I feel very strongly that actually there's so much more out there, you know, there's so much more that you can treat yourself with. And funnily enough, I think as a nation, we're a lot, a lot more expansive, a lot braver with something like food. Um, than we are with interiors or the, than we are with, with our, uh, the way that we dress, the way that we present ourselves. Um, so I think that the, um, and my personal theory is that obviously the food thing is, is probably linked to wine. So maybe we should be less sober when we get dressed. <laughs> yeah, well, that kind of leads into my next question, which was obviously things have gone quite minimalist over the last few years, haven't they? I wondered whether you think that flamboyance is going Sorry, to come I just, back. Sorry, did you just shiver? I, I did say you, you shiver, shiver, yes, I know. <laughs> I said that M word. <laughs> this country is so often so ridiculously M25 centric. Mm. Um, and uh, you'll get this impression that somehow we're all terribly modern and we're all terribly mm. pared down in our decorating um, because that's how they do it in Islington. Yeah. Uh, but actually, I've always found that the further from the M25 you get, the more indulgent decorating becomes. Colour becomes a lot stronger. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a sort of a traditional thing. I think it's a, a climate thing. Um, but I think it's also uh, a, a just straightforward, bloody-minded independence that actually, um, just because the Guardian and says that uh, um, pebble shades are in. Um, actually, uh, Cumbria says, do you know what? No, they're not. Um, I've always liked my blueberries and my bilberries and my um, rich berry colours, and I'm going to stick with those, thank you very much indeed. You know, I think over the last 20 years, uh, I think I'm constantly surprising people by saying that actually, you know, rather than seeing the North as some sort of design tundra, mm. uh, actually it's weirdly the other way around. You'll find that um, uh, wallpaper, paint, uh, colour, um, uh, richness, indulgence sell more uh, the further North you get than, than, than um, you know, the sort of a very understated look that you get round the London area. Well, I have to say, Bloody Minded Independence probably is the exact description of Cumbria. Mm. How long before you go minds. independent full stop? You know, I mean, it's We're following sort of, Scotland. It's on the cards, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Know. I mean, we're just under that, that If you're of looking for now, a so. king, you know, with a kind you of a... I've got a wardrobe, I've got stuff that I could wear, and, you know, I do ceremony quite well. It'd be perfect. I, I can just see you there. King of Cumbria. King, I, King of Cumbria. Yeah, oh. I think it will. In fact, we'll go back to Cumberland. King, King of Cumberland, that's got a better... I'm liking it even more. And you can yeah. be first duchess. Oh, there we go. First that's duchess wonderful. <laughs> so you've had a really varied career, actually, because, I mean, you did Stepping Out With Your Wife. Yeah. You obviously did all the kind of um, house decoration shows. Mm. Um, I noticed that you'd done the Blackpool Illuminations design a few years ago. Well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, that's a continuing thing. I'm, I'm the creative curator uh, right. of the Blackpool Illuminations. So I, I do actually spend a, a lot of time in Blackpool. Um, and it's something that I uh, enjoy enormously. It's, and it's a strange thing because mm. it's not part of my, um, you know, my, my kind of growing up. It's not part of my emotional DNA at all. I very much grew up in, in, in London, and uh, but my first big job was in Blackpool. I did the Winter Gardens in about 1986 or 7. Mm. And I've always loved the fact that there is this one place in the UK where design is allowed to let its hair down a bit. It's a global phenomenon. You know, it's, it's, it's a brand. You go to Las Vegas, and they'll always cite the Blackpool Illuminations as being the great, great granddaddy of what they do. So um, over the years, I've been doing, you know, I've been designing bits and pieces, and, and eventually I was uh, uh, promoted, uh, given my own parking place, my key to the executive toilet and some gold braid on my shoulder and told to get on and be the um, creative curator. 
And it's something that I'm, I'm passionate about. I mean, weirdly, though, actually, my role now is almost predominantly fundraising because um, the, the, the eliminations are no longer uh, paid for uh, by, by mm. local government, which, you know, uh, a lot of people are very upset about. I think it's, you know, why should they have been in the first place? Mm. Actually, to me, um, this, is, this is a phenomenon that raises £100 million for local businesses at a time when there is no business. Um, they should be um, involved with that yeah. uh, financially. So um, one of the joys of being that bloke off the telly is that you can end up being asked to do an enormous amount of very, very strange things. Mm. Um, and you can get on and do them. I mean, I trained as a fine artist. I went into interior design, but I've always done things like um, theatre design. I've done uh, styling. I've done graphics. I've done, um, you know, so many other elements that, that that sort of just carried on with my career, really. Mm. Fantastic. Well, I will keep you no longer. Let's enjoy a nice glass of wine. Oh, go on, keep me longer. <laughs> Can I'm I loving it. No, I'm talking about me. I've got a glass of wine and you're giving me <laughs> you're giving me some rather disturbing looking snack on a cracker. Rum butter. This is our local delicacy. Oh, okay. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Go on, give it a try. You have to try it while you're in Cumbria. Mm. I like the butter, I'm not sure about the cracker. <laughs> I think you should maybe rethink the cracker. Serve it on a slice of peacock. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs>